Learning to program is a significant part of most computer science degrees. In the second year of our degree, students learn the object-oriented programming language Java. In the autumn term, they learn the basics of the programming language and object-oriented design. In the spring term, they apply what they've learned to programming Android apps for mobile phones. This leads to a coursework project, where they have to create a game for Android phones. Although the assessment is based primarily on technical aspects of the game, such as how well it follows the principles of object-oriented design, we're always impressed by the creative ways in which the students demonstrate this. Let's see some examples of their work. Some of the games stick to a fairly abstract graphical style. Here's one such game. It's simple, but very playable. The ball falls to the right, but you can move it left by tapping the screen. The idea is to guide the ball through the gaps in the walls. You gain a point for every gap you pass. If you hit the wall, the game ends. Continuing the abstract style, this game is based on the playground game British Bulldog. You control the white character with your finger. You've got to get from one end of the screen to the other without being caught. Every time you do so, you get a point. If you get caught, the game restarts and your scores reset. This game's difficulty is configurable. You can choose how many enemies there are. This game is called Space Defender. It's a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up with a nice retro futuristic look. You control the spaceship at the bottom of the screen and have to shoot the other spaceships and avoid the meteors. If you hit a meteor or a ship gets to the bottom of the screen, you lose a life. As the game progresses, the difficulty increases. Your spaceship's gun also gets upgraded from firing one laser beam to firing two. And there's also a high score table, so you can keep track of how well you did. Here's another game where you have to shoot the enemies. It's called Tank War. You control the green tank and have to shoot the red tanks. The tank is controlled by tapping the direction arrows on the blue circle on screen. It may look a little primitive graphically, but what's impressive about this one is how many different things are moving at any one time. If you add up all the tanks and bullets, there must be about a hundred different objects moving simultaneously, but the game still runs fairly quickly. Students often manage to inject a little humour into their games. This one, produced during the coronavirus pandemic, is called Coro No. You control the doctor, who jumps up the screen when you tap it. The idea is to collect gloves, face masks and hand sanitizer, while avoiding viruses. Here's a game with a similar playstyle, but a completely different theme. You've got to collect the bananas while avoiding spiky balls. This game has several different levels, including one with spikes on the floor and the ceiling. A few of the students produced games that very closely followed the style of classic games from the 1980s. As we're interested in their programming ability, not their artistic ability, this is fine. Although obviously copyright law would forbid them from distributing their work to the public. This game is a platform game, very similar in style to the original Super Mario Bros. A lot of work went into replicating the behaviour of the enemies and the power-ups. However, if you've played the original, you'll notice that the physics in this game are quite different. This game took its inspiration from the original Legend of Zelda. You have to navigate through a dungeon filled with monsters and collect treasure. If you get hit by a monster, you lose health, but you become invulnerable for a few seconds. But while the style is retro, the controls are quite modern. You move your character by tilting your phone. The more you tilt your phone, the faster he moves. Here's a game that was rather different from most of the others. It's called Monster Attack, and it's a tower defence game. Monsters come down the screen towards your base in the bottom right corner. You have to build guard towers to shoot the monsters. There are different types of tower with different costs. You get more money to spend on new towers by killing more monsters. 
If too many monsters get to your base, you lose the game. Finally, here's a game with a fantasy theme called Cauldron. The aim of the game is to collect different potions in your cauldron. However, collecting other items will hinder you. The blob of goo makes the cauldron move very slowly, and the spider makes your cauldron smaller. When you collect an eyeball, the screen becomes narrower. If it gets too narrow, the cauldron gets crushed and the game ends. Thanks for watching this video about Java coursework created by computer science students at the University of Reading. And thanks to all our students for sharing their work with us. If you liked what you saw, or if you think you could do better, why not consider coming to study here?